Hey guys, welcome back. This is Mike from Digital Offensive, and today we're going to talk about my five-step process for studying for the OCP. How do you get the most bang for your buck throughout the labs to be able to pass the exam? Let's get into it. When you first sign up for the OCP, you're going to get a lot of information, and 9 out of 10 people, the first thing they want to do is jump right into those labs and start hacking, using the skills that they think they have to be able to compromise as many boxes as they can. Well, if that's the case, why waste your time with the labs in the first place? Go take the exam, right? You're not learning anything by just jumping in and hacking. What I want to go through with you guys today is my five-step process that I use to be able to study for the exam. Now, to be honest, the first time I took the exam, I did exactly what I just said. I jumped right in, I started hacking, and I went back to the book and the material later on, much later into my lab time than what I should have done, which I think greatly hurt, uh, hurt me. Second time through the exam, I followed my five-step process. I was able to get through all the public network, admin network, IT network, and compromise all the boxes and still have plenty of time left to be able to continue my studying to get ready to pass the OCP. My second time through the OCP exam, I was able to pass it within seven hours, right? Just below eight hours, like seven and a half, borderline eight hours, I was able to get through the exam. Now, do I guarantee you're going to pass the exam? No. I have many years of experience behind me. I've been through this uh, twice, and I do a lot of additional research and um, testing on the side of my real job. So let's jump right into it. So number one, watch the videos, right? So you're going to get tons of videos. Start off with the chapter one of the videos. Watch chapter one videos. Once you're done with chapter one videos, read chapter one of the book. Right now, or you can do vice versa, right? So one and two are, are interchangeable in my process. You can either read the book first and then watch the video or watch the video, read the book. Either way, that has to be done. So watch the video, read the book for that section. Don't jump ahead. Um, don't watch multiple videos. Do it in order. Sequence is important here, right? So as I said, one in, uh, process step one and process step two are interchangeable. Either read the book watch the video or watch the video, read the book for that chapter. Once done, we're going to jump into the number three of the process. So number three of the process is you're going to do those exercises at the end of the chapter. Those exercises at the end of the chapter do several things for you. One, if you complete all the exercises in the chapter, or uh, in the whole book, you're going to get additional five points on your exam if you document them. Number two, it's going to reinforce the information that you just learned within those chapters by applying it into the lab network. Now, those exercises won't work if those machines don't exist in the lab network. Now, there are certain exercises in the book that are not just done in the lab network. Um, you'll notice those as you go through the book. And they are still important within the lab network. They can still can be applied at a later point in time in the lab network as you start learning more and start doing some additional enumeration. Um, so do not skip the exercises whatsoever. If you're doing the exercises, you're going to notice that you're going to find at least one box per chapter in that book that matches up with that exercise or that methodology that you're learning within that chapter. So what I'm saying here is if a chapter has 15 exercises, you're not going to find 15, uh, 15 machines. If a chapter has information about scanning for Windows vulnerabilities, you're going to find machines that have Windows vulnerabilities. And then when you get to your next section about how to exploit Windows, you're going to start going back to those previous notes and start applying those methodologies in that chapter versus the methodology you found in the previous chapter to start compromising the, those machines and so on and so forth. All right, so that's section one, two, and three of my process, right? Number four of my process, right? So you've now watched the videos, you read the book, you've done the exercises. Now we're going to document. We're going to document all the results from our exercises. Now, when we're documenting our exercises, the easiest thing I find to do for documentation of our exercises is I write out the question. Now, you can copy and paste the question directly from the uh, from the PDF file and put it into a Word document or a cherry tree. And then basically what I do here, let's say we have question one. Show how to find all the Windows machines with SMB shares, right? Let's just say that's the question, right? What I do here, I just do A for like my answer. I would create a script that would use 
the mmap scripts SMB, let's say for example, right? That's not the right syntax. And I would actually show the right syntax um, and the results, right? So show syntax, and then we're gonna say show results. And then basically I'm gonna have this data here. Now, once I have these answers, these machines are vulnerable machines. What am I gonna do here? I'm gonna basically create another template file here. And I'm gonna say Windows machines with known SMB vulnerabilities, right? So let's say we have another area, Windows machines, known SMB vulns, right? And I'm gonna put all the IPs go here, right? And I spelled Windows wrong. All right. So basically, I'm gonna basically document all the material as I'm going through. So step four of my process is document, document, document. Why? Because you're gonna come back to all these notes later on as you're going through the lab. You may not find a machine that you think is vulnerable at the current time, but later on, you're gonna do some additional enumeration that's gonna say, oh, I've seen this before. Let me jump back to these notes and then figure out how I can exploit it. All right, so number five, once you've done all your documentation, all your exercises, you've read the book, you've watched the videos, now you're ready to go hacking, right? You're gonna apply what you learn in all sections of your uh, lab materials here to actually going through and compromising these Windows environments. Or not, uh, these lab environments, not Windows environments. All right? So at this point, you should be out there hacking. And as you're hacking, you're applying this methodology, you're finding more machines. How are you gonna document the machines you're finding or the information you're finding as you compromise each machine? As you see over here, I have several uh, areas broken down. Like you can see public network, I have IT network and so on and so forth. And what I did in here is under each one of them, I created two categories. I created one called process and one called completed. And inside the process one, I put all the machines that I'm currently working on. And then under complete, I put all the machines that I have not, uh, that I have fully rooted, that I have all the information for. And I broke out each one as its own sub um, branch under my cherry tree. And I used a template similar to this in my uh, process here. So each of my branches here will have the host name and IP address of the machine. So let's say we have 10.10.10.12. .10 and let's just say that machine uh, host name is, I don't know, let's say Cali, right? Now I do my initial uh, enumeration, and then this, this would be based on the, the methodology you picked up through the book or your own spin of things. If you use an order recon, you put that information in here. But I usually do this, I usually do TCP, and then I list out the ports, let's say 80443. And now if they have some interesting information, I'll list out that extra information here, right? So IIS, server, um, and whatever else, right? I'll just start putting all that information from my scans in here. You can copy and paste in here, whatever floats your boat. And then I would do the same thing for UDP down here, right? So we have our UDP, and let's say we have 161. Whoops, 161. Um, and let's say we discovered that SMP is running on that port, right? So now we know we should go back and enumerate that port because we may find additional services or information hidden within the SMP to go back and um, use for further enumeration. Now, since we have port 80 open and 403 open, I would run my uh, web enumeration and I'm gonna put down the tools I'm using here too. So like uh, Derby, uh, Durbuster, GoBuster. Per preferably, I like to use GoBuster and Derby. I don't like Durbuster. Um, I really like to go to GoBuster. I find it to be a little bit faster and finding more information, but there's other tools out there. There's WFuzz, and so on and so forth that you can use as you go through this process, right? And I would take all this information and then list it all here. Whatever tools I run, I'm gonna put their output in here because I'm gonna use that to come back to. I don't wanna have to keep rerunning these tools every time I go through until I find my access point and my compromise, right? So let's say we're going through here and uh, as we're going through our enumeration, we discover that there is an exploit uh, out there for, um, SMP, right, SMP, and I would write down SMP, I would write down link to exploit, if it's a public facing exploit, 
if it's not a publicly facing exploit and it's something where it's like a username and password, the SMP string, I would copy and paste that portion of the SMP string here. So like user slash password equals XYZ, right? Whatever it is. I would put that information here for my initial point of access. I would take a screenshot of that as well. So I have that information when I'm putting together my report at a later point in time. The more information you collect in your initial enumeration, the less work you're gonna have to do later when you're writing your reports. Uh, down here, I would do my user proof. I would basically grab my user proof file and put that in here. And then I would start working on my root access, right? Uh, root uh, proof, acquired information. Um, I'm gonna actually put initial vector. So how did I get the initial vector on this box, right? So let's say that username and password just happened to be an admin account, right? I would write down uh, user and password had permissions of admin, and I would show proof of that, right? So we can use net user, um, that username, and basically that would give us some information about that user, and then basically we can document that in here, and then we can do the initial, the further screenshots. Now, the big thing here is your post enumeration, right? This is really big in uh, labs and in real life too, right? So in real life, you always wanna collect as much information as possible as you're going through machines. And this is something to get used to, uh, especially in the labs. If you're going through the labs and you're compromising machines and re going really fast and jumping around and not really taking time on this, you're not gonna get all the machines, right? Um, you're gonna run into areas where it's gonna rely on some other client exploit or some previous knowledge. Just like if you were doing a real world pen test, right? You're gonna build up your data as you're going through. You make your initial compromise. You re realize that server is in the DMZ. You realize that server has a connection to that backend database. And by the, uh, in your post enumeration, you find that backend database's SA uh, account. Then you connect to that backend database. That backend database hasn't been patched in God knows how long. And you find an exploit from there, which now allows you to have another pivot point to further in the network. It all builds on top of each other as you're going through everything just like in real life. So post, post uh, enumeration, make sure you're collecting any locally running uh, services, databases, hashes, username and passwords, zip files, anything that's out of the norm. Take, a, take note of that, make it, uh, write, down, um, write it out, uh, save it to a file, um, copy the files to your local machine. You may use that information later on. What, one of the things I did is as I found all my hashes, I started collecting all my hashes into one file and then basically I would use something like um, um, the hash tools to basically send out the uh, mass um, authentication requests across the lab networks to see which ones those passwords may or may not work for. And that could possibly open up additional doors for you if you're able to do something like that. Uh, you can watch some of my previous videos where I show you the tools to use to do things like that. And not only that you can do it in the LAN networks, but as you start doing it in the real world, if your engagement allows, you can do similar things. You can do password sprays to see where those accounts work out there in other areas. And that may open additional doors, additional avenues for you in your testing. Um, as I said here, I put a reminder down here. So I always remember to put all my passwords and hashes into a master file. So I know to go back to that file and use it. Um, so, Following these processes, right? These five steps, let's go through the five steps again. The five steps here is watch the videos, read the book, chapter by chapter, right? At the end of the chapter, we're gonna jump into doing our exercises. We're gonna go through all exercises, document them as question and answer with all proofs needed. And then we're gonna go into section four. Section four is basically our um, documentation, right? So that's documenting all that information we just found. And then finally, we're gonna go into our fifth step of the process of going out there and hacking. Following these five steps, will guarantee you to find multiple machines in the lab. By the time you're done, you should have close to a dozen machines, or at least have an idea how to compromise close to a dozen machines. Um, if you don't, go back and check your methodology. See what you're doing wrong. Now, as I said, things have changed. If you're not using the official versions of Offsex Cali, things may not work. Um, I know there's been changes to Enum for uh, Linux, so you may want to find an older version of Enum for Linux. I know there's some other issues with some SMB scanning in the newer Kali, so you may want to go out there and find different ways to find that information, just to make sure that 
you're not missing something. Just because you have the tools don't mean they're the right tools. Explore, learn, apply the methodology, and then modify that methodology to work for you. If you guys like these videos, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing my next video.